Sponges. Which phylum are we talking about here, youths? Periphera. I heard it. Who wants 20 points? Periphera. Yeah, we're going to go to phylum periphera. Right here, the most basal phylum out of all the animals. Right, that first one on your cladogram. That means it's our outgroup. That also means it has less in common with the rest of the animals. Name me some traits that sponges have that make them less like everything else. Give me some traits that make them more basal. Give me one. They lack body organs. Yeah, they don't have any organs. In fact, do they even have any tissues? No. No, they don't even have tissues. So they have specialized cells, but they don't have any tissues. They have no locomotion. They can't move. That's right. They have no locomotion at all. They can't move. In fact, once upon a time, we would not even have considered them to be animals. Right? Comes from the word animated, moving things. Even after we redefined animals and knew that there were some animals that didn't move, P.S. we call that, look over at my board there, Cecil, S-E-S-S-I-L-E, Cecil. See how it's spelled there so you know how to spell it when you write it down. Ah, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Cecil, which means they can't move. Really going to sharpen your pencil I, I know, while I, I talk on I YouTube? Know. You're killing me! Now i got to cut the video! Wait, Dang! I'm just going to do it. Hurry it up! Couldn't even use the back one that's farther from the camera. Gotta have this sound on the video. Crikey. I'm sorry. No, they, he's fine, he's fine. He's famous now. All right, look at this point. They're Cecil, so they don't move from point A to point B. They don't have any tissues, or which is a collection of cells all working together, right? Yeah. For example, uh, skin cells, right? I have skin cells. The, all my skin cells get together to make nice skin tissue. Here it is, skin tissue. It all works together, right? Collectively, one unit. Sponges don't do that. So for a long time, we thought it was like this colony of weird protists. We didn't even realize that it was working, like it communicating with each other. It's, it's still pretty close. It was super basal. On top of that, every other animal has some kind of symmetry. These do not. Right? You look at them, they're like blobby amorphous, just globally. The word for no symmetry is asymmetrical. A meaning not or non, right? Yes. Now, you looked at the other things. What is the majority of the organism's symmetry? Majority of the other animals have what kind of symmetry? We have this kind of symmetry. What do we have? Bilateral. I heard it. Who wants 20 points, Abby? Bilateral symmetry, right? We can cut two halves, right? Now the Cnidarians have radial symmetry, Chinarians have weird like five part radial symmetry, but the Cnidarians have like almost perfect radial symmetry, infinite lines. You're probably looking in your head like, I looked at some of those, they didn't look very symmetrical. Well, I'll let you in a secret, you don't look very symmetrical, and if you did, you'd look weird. Just go ahead and Google sometime pictures where they've taken like celebrities' faces and actually made them symmetrical, like perfectly symmetrical. There is one guy. They look weird. They look weird. So none of us are perfectly symmetrical, but our body plan is, right? I've got, everything I've got over here, I've got another one over here, pretty much, just about. Even internal organs, almost all of them are in pairs, right? So sponges don't do that, nor do they have organs. P.S. An organ is what? If a tissue is a group of cells all working together, what is an organ? Group of tissues all working together, right? Everybody feel good here? Yeah. What do you call a bunch of organs working together? Uh, an organ system. Organ system, right? Like the digestive system. Got a whole bunch of digestive organs all working together to break down the food, absorb it into my blood. I wonder how sponges do that if they don't even have tissue. Well, let's find out. First, we need to talk about the general body plan of the sponge. So this sucker right here, you want to sketch that. And that would be good. What if you're not good at art? Give me the old sketcheroo. Listen, not good at art. I don't. You can't draw an oval with no. some dots on it. No. Okay. Yeah. Right. You don't have to draw all these other. This is like four sponges. Just draw the one sponge. And all they did, they took the sponge, probably like a, like a disc sponge, and they just went like mert lert, and they cut it open. Do we need you to mert, cut open part? Mert. Yeah. You want to see the the inside part. Right. You want to see the inside part. Every sponge has these uh, similar structures on them. Now one of the reasons why uh, you guys did not get 
full points on your sponge sketches is most likely because you did not include enough of the dots. I put a bunch of them. Almost everybody was able to include the big dot at the top. We call that one the osculum. This sponge has several oscula. See, it's got many of the big holes at the top. This is our commercial sponge. We literally grow them commercially to act like the SpongeBob kind of sponges. More accurate to say we invented the SpongeBob kind of sponge to act like the skeleton of this thing right here. So almost everybody included the oscula, the big pores. Go pass it around. Look really closely, you'll see a whole bunch of ostia, singular would be ostium, which are the small pores. You guys notice how there's arrows drawn here? Yes or yes? Yeah. That's important because how this sponge works, and I know you know this because I saw you guys sticking your fingers inside my sponges. I was not. On the inside of the sponge it is... Weird. Ostium. Hollow. Hollow. They're hollow on the inside. That's why they're showing you this cutaway. A lot of sponges, like this one, is a different kind of sponge. You look really closely, focus on that. And you can see there's teeny tiny pores all over it. You guys see the teeny tiny pores? Yeah. yeah. Then one big old osculum at the top. They'll do this because the ostia are there to pull water in, and the osculum is there for the water to exit. So in your picture, you may even want to like just give yourself the flow of water. When you labeled those pores, go ahead and remind yourself that the ostia are for pulling water in and the oscula are for pushing water out. Have you written that on your paper yet? Ostia pull water in, oscula, the big pores, push water out. Is this what an actual sponge feels like? Is that, that, what you said that, that is an actual sponge. I thought you were joking. You're serious? It's like an actual sponge? Yeah. Really? Dead sponge. Does Pull it, it out of the like ocean. this when it's alive? Mm -hmm. it That's its skeleton. Oh. Wait, so what would it, what would it feel like if it was alive? alive? Squishier. Squishier, but it would still kind of feel like this, but just like, like it's rough. Like the one that you had some water in the water. That's weird. Uh, even squishier than that. Because they're normally like this, they're skeleton. So normally they're going to be covered with this colorful tissue. See all their color, well, not tissue, but colorful cells. They get this epidermis on them. So normally they'll have like a thin layer of cells all over the outside. Right, attached to the skeleton that they produce themselves, just like uh, you did. Yeah. So is that thing dead? Pretty much. The what? The sponge? The sponge, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah super, it's just, it's just super dead. It's a skeleton, it's dead. So like, if they have any tissue, how, did, how is that just the skeleton? Like, I don't know if that question makes sense, but... Yeah, I see where you're coming from. It's sort of, it's, I feel like they're splitting hairs maybe a little bit. Like what died off? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. So now that we've talked about the body plan, let's talk about the specific cells, yes? Yes. Oh, perfect. Blue, blue. Here's a cross section, zooming in. Notice that they made the ostia really huge. So you have several different types of cells. The ones covering the outside are called panacocytes. Just the epidermis. No need to even write that one down. What's more interesting, the cells that make up the pores are called porocytes. Pretty, pretty imaginative. Pretty crazy. There's other cool cells that you definitely want to write down called amoebocytes. Anybody know what an amoeba is? I've heard There's of some kind of bacteria. I'm just waiting for hand raises. Ah! Is it a small bacteria? Uh, if it's small, not a bacterium, it's, it's a protist, small, single cellular, and they can sort of like blobble around. They're predators, they move around, they find stuff, they eat it. Like, like, kind of like, just, yeah. These have the ability to detach themselves and sort of get around here and move around. Do all sorts of amoeba type stuff. So what from up there should be right there? <clears throat> You want the porocytes, you know, they make the pores. Amoebocytes, they can do, they can detach and move around. Leave some room, we'll talk about that again later. And then the ones that are really important, the coanocytes. Coanocytes. How come they all end in site? What does cyto mean? Oh, cell? I don't know. Oh. 
Sal? Sal, yeah. This seems like a good throwback for the quiz. Cyto means cell. So you got pore cells, <laughs> pino cells, amoeba cells, and coano cells. P.S. I forgot to tell you this when we were looking at the last picture. Go and label that internal, that cavity. Label that as a spongia seal. Spongio as in sponge. This one looks like coel pronounced seal. What is that? What's seal mean? Cavity. cavity. Very good. Cavity. So sponge cavity. Not really, <clears throat> not really like a body cavity. It's a sponge cavity because they're hollow on the inside. They've got like a pseudo cavity type thing. Sponge cavity for the sponges. Everyone feeling good so far? Yes or yes? Let's zoom in. Let's talk about the coanocyte because they're pretty cool. Here's a nice diagram of coanocyte. You got your normal cell stuff. Notice rounded, no cell wall, whole deal. What's this up here? It's a flagellum. What's a flagellum for, children? To swim around. To swim around. They stick out the flagellum and they're doing a little like woo, swimming, 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 swimming. They use it almost like an alligator's tail or like a propeller on the back of the boat. But remind me, are sponges motile? No. Are they modal? Nope. No, what are they? What are they? Immobile. Purposes. Cecil? They're Cecil. They're immobile. They're Cecil. So what the devil are they doing with this thing then? All right, imagine. You got a boat, right? You're in your boat. You turn on the propeller. Ooh, it's a speedboat. Yeehaw. You're having fun now. You're on Apple Valley Lake. You're boating around. You're boating around. Boom! Here comes Superman. Grabs the boat. Now the boat's going nowhere. Propeller's still going. What's happening? The boat's not going anywhere. Using energy and what's happening? If the boat's not moving, what is moving? Propeller. Water. Propeller's moving and it's shooting that water like everywhere now, right? People behind you getting sprayed all up and whatnot. This is what they do. So they've got their body, right? They've got those tiny, tiny ostia. These do like a little propeller action. Directs the water up through the osculum. Guess what happens then? Pulls water right in through the ostia. So the coanocytes, where you wrote down about coanocytes, you should mention that they use the flagella to direct the water. They create that current. And it's not like a, it's not that gentle of a current either. They're, they're pretty aggressive with their water pulling. You know, like you go to the pool, you got like that one jet that's pulling the water in, and you kind of like sucks your hand onto it. My mom used to always be like, Oh, touch that, your fingers will get stuck, you'll die. <laughs> Right? You could get your hand like, you gotta, you gotta like really want to pull it away. There's some sponges out there like this big. Whoa. Big old barrel sized osculum at the top. They're really pulling the water. They're working real hard at it. Wait, you get like stuff Using all this flagella, that takes a ton of energy. Yeah. Um, you could probably overpower a sponge. Like you're definitely way too big to go through its ostia for sure. Like the sponge is not going to pull you through. Although that would be fun. Like what if it's like ginormous? Like what are those big enough like for us to go into? It? I mean, oh no, yeah, there's some like that. Can we get stuck in it? Here's. Here's the deal. Sponges, right, because they're so simplistic, none of this is tissue. See how we just got these specialized cells yeah. all hanging out? So, so really, they're just limited by, like, how many things they can eat and gravity. Like, they can, they can get big. They so, can get they, big. so they couldn't keep you. Like, I've, I've never seen a sponge so large that you wouldn't be able to swim away from it. But, I mean, you could probably feel it pull your hand in. Like, not freaky. inside, but, like, you know, one of these. That would be pretty freaky. Say, yeah, like a vacuum. Like, none of you are at risk for being sucked up by your vacuum cleaner, but, right, you get a little resistance when you got to move your hand away? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So our so, vacuum cleaner's not really there. This is the longest sidebar. You should have just skipped all this. You skipped all this. None of this will be on the quiz. All right, now, sponges, here's my question. They're using this flagella. They're doing this whole thing with water current. Like, it's cool and all, but why? Like, what is the point of just blasting through ATP to... Ooh, water! Sam, what do you think? Is that how they get their food? That is how they get their food, yeah. They're filter feeders. They're filter feeders. Anything floating in the water. P.S. We have a word for things floating in the water. Planktonic. Plankton. Planktonic. 
That is the yes. adjective version of plankton. Plankton are planktonic. I want you to imagine a plank in a lake. It's going to float on the top of the water, right? Because wood's not super dense. Mm -hmm. It's going to float around. Is the plankton control where it goes? Yeah. If I go out there and start splashing around, it's going to create a little current and push the plank. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Plankton are the same way. They're little crappy, weak swimmers. They're floaters. If there's a current, they can't fight against them. If there's a current, they can't fight against them. Those of you that got a chance to see my water fleas over there, the Daphnia, little tiny arthropods, use their antenna to swim around. Those are plankton. They can swim. In still water, they can swim. But if there's any kind of current, they can't fight it. They can't fight it. So they get sucked up in here, and this is where stuff gets crazy. They get sucked up in here, and then the amoeba size like, boom, gotcha, boy, breaks it down in tiny little pieces. We call that digestion. And then, remember how they can get off and go around? They take the nutrients and they like distribute them to the other parts of the sponge. So it's literally just an amoeba. Amoeba's are take yeah. care of it. Yeah. Like the so the amoeba sites are really, really in charge of like taking care of stuff in here. Coanocytes create this nice like uh, in current, out current, fill the sponge seal full of delicious like plankton and like bits of plants, algae, what have you. The amoebocytes break it up, they're in charge of distributing the nutrients and doing that whole thing. Weird, right? Say I cut a big piece off the sponge. I'll wait for it. Wait, ask me that later. Ask me that later. <laughs> First I want to talk about the types of sponges. What's that thing that Nemo lives in? That's a cnidarian. That's an excellent Anemone. Um, All right, so Anemone. let's talk about the types of sponges, yeah? Yes. Anemone. Okay, there's, there's three main types of sponges. You probably saw them in the book. This one is a great example of what we call a calcareous sponge. The common name for this is a commercial sponge. We grow them commercially. You used to be able to roll into like IGA. They just called it natural sponge. You could buy it. Bucket of water, clean the table, whole thing. Acts like a sponge. Wait, so it's like a real sponge? Because it's a sponge. Yeah, those fake sponges, we designed them to act like this. So, you could have gone... Like, when, when did they like have that, real sponges in stores? They do now. Always. Oh, they, that's what, they still... That's what I just oh, I thought you said they used to. Well, I don't know if they still stock them. I'm talking like a couple years ago. Oh, okay. All right, so they're called a calcareous sponge, though, because they contain large amounts of calcium carbonate. You definitely need to write that down. It is one of, if not the most important ion dissolved in seawater. It's going to come up a few more times this unit, too. That's big C, little a, big C, big O, 3, CaCO3. For those of you in chemistry and or that have taken physical science, you know that that's a nice ion because you got calcium, which makes plus two ions, grabbing on over here. Calcium carbonate. This is also one of the re it's super soluble in water, right? So the material for the skeleton, right, when they're doing their whole ostea oscula thing, they're pulling in water. They can actually get some of that calcium carbonate out of their water too, which is fun. Also means eventually this thing would dissolve in the ocean a little bit. But it's also one of the reasons why like sea salt is better for you. Regular salt's just sodium chloride. Sodium's been linked to like high blood pressure, heart disease, dehydration, all kinds of stuff. Sea salt has some calcium and some other stuff in it. It's still mostly sodium though. Like it's still like large amounts of salt are, is still large amounts of salt. But you know, it's got some other, some other ions in there, some other elements that your body needs, right? Like calcium, that's good for bones and whatnot. To me, it all just tastes like salt, but some people say it tastes better. Anyway, calcareous sponge, they got a lot of calcium carbonate. The skeleton is very spongy, and it's literally made of a substance that's primarily calcium carbonate called spongin. You know, because it's the sponge's skeleton. Spongin. Soaks up water like a sponge. What's it made of? Spongin. Now, I know you're tempted to be like, yeah, I don't need to write that down. That makes sense. I caution you, you probably need to study this one a little harder than the rest of the terms because it does make so much sense. You're more likely to forget it and just be like, but something spongy, spongette, spongeriner, spongela, spongin, spongin. It's on the inside of a sponge, sponge in. 
Mm -hmm. In addition to that, you saw us on the last diagram, they have spicules. Spicules. Which act like a skeleton. Right? Which sort of strengthen the skeleton, right? That was one of the traits you guys had a hard time placing. Spicules. Little tiny spike looking things. It's about to appear on the screen and then it's going to go away. See, this is talking about spicules. So they also have some spicules to help make it a little more, more rugged, right? Now you felt this one, you felt how it felt. You guys feel the one when it was in the bucket of water? Felt a lot more spongy. Remember, that's they're in water, so that's more like how they are all the time. Nice and spongy. So you have calcareous sponges. Here's a picture of one, all covered in its like coanocytes and friends. Right, they're pretty. No. They're colorful. You can see the ostea really well, see all the oscula really well. Remember, these are filter feeding, they're constantly pulling water in and shooting it up. Calcareous sponges, my second favorite kind of sponges. My least favorite kind of sponges are the in-between sponges, the demo sponges. Here is a good example of a demo sponge. These are usually called like a typical sponge because this is also a demo sponge. Demo sponge, demo sponge, demo sponge. Go pass around the demo sponge, you'll feel that it's a lot more rigid. It's a lot scratchier than the other one because it has less calcium carbonate it's got more silica, which is kind of hard to see over on the board in the dark. That one gets silica pumped. So this is SiO2, as in silica crystals, yes. As in SiO2, by the way, pure SiO2, that's quartz. So they have more spicules, which you feel. It feels spiky, doesn't it? You feel the spicules. They're made of silica, less water soluble, more rigid. That's what glass is made out of, by the way, silicates. Sand, quartz, glass. Carbonates, well, you, you can make glass of those too, but it's got to be polycarbonate. It's what your glasses are made out of. Also, bulletproof glass. Is there a reason that you use No, yeah, it's, it, calcareous is not a proper noun either. Okay. See, now it's bothering me too. I know, it's bothering me until I said it. Feel, feel free to give a thumbs up for lowercase demo sponge. <laughs> so that's a demo sponge, and that one's kind of in the middle, right? So you've got oh. your calcareous sponge is soft. That one's a lot rougher. I don't like it. It would, it would exfoliate the crap out of you though, right? In fact, you take a calcareous sponge and a demo sponge, you put them together, guess what? You've got like the sponge with like the rough side and the soft side. Well. You could dual, you could dual wield your sponges while you're scrubbing the kitchen floor, Cinderella style. How exciting. That's what I was thinking about doing. The third kind of sponge we don't have any of, which is a real turd. Right here. Hopefully it's still working. It's still working! It's called a glass sponge and it looks like this. Whoa. Now, unlike the calcareous, yeah, they're cool, right? That looks cool. Yeah, that's Why so don't you cool. have that? Unlike the calcareous sponge and the demo sponge, these are almost entirely made up of silica. Like I said, it's what glass is made of. So it's a lot more rigid. These are not spongy at all. They're also, their skeletons are a lot more fragile. Wow. In college, we had one sort of like this. You see this really pretty. See how big the ostea are? Look on the outsides. This is a live one. Do you see how it looks kind of blurry on the outsides? That's, that's not blur. That's its epidermis. Those are sponge, those are sponge cells. See the sponge cells? Whoa. Right? Oh, Being weird. all spongy, right? Nice big ostea. Now, uh, we had these at my college when I took my invert zoo class. We had ones about like this long, about like this big around. What did it feel like? Glass. Actually, like it actually felt like glass. Yeah, like, like it's rigid. It's not flexible at all. Even that demo sponge, like it's not, it not bendy. They're just fragile. If you drop them, they'll break all over the floor. I, really I mean, feel they, they feel more like uh, they feel more like the coral skeletons. They're a lot, a lot more rigid. A lot. Is it dead? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this one, this is probably dead. See how it's not in water? It's probably dead. Maybe it's in water. I don't know. I didn't take the picture. The ones that I've got to play Same around with were dead. Pictures? None of these are my pictures. Man. 
So, those are your types of sponges. Now, Sam, get ready to ask me that question again. So now we've talked about their body plan, their types. Let's talk about what we're always excited to talk about. Reproduction. Animal Reproduction. reproduction. Yay! Now, one of the ways that these things can reproduce is asexually, which means, tell me about the genetic diversity of the offspring compared to the parent. It's the exact same. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. The primary way that they do it is a process called budding. See this sponge here? If this is like the main sponge, you got like one, two, maybe even a third baby sponges all growing off of the parent sponge. This is budding. Like a plant. Exactly like a plant, just like a clone, just growing right off the side. In fact, usually when we do some plants, we call this one like the sucker. It's like, and they usually try and break it off because we want to really focus our growth here. But if you're trying to like take over an area, carry on your species, reproduction pretty important. Why don't we consider these plants so like... Because they're animals. Like, Rounded, no cell walls, ingest food before digestion, right? You saw it taken into the sponge seal, right? Heterotrophic, plants are autotrophic. Yeah, they're animals. They've got more, they also have more DNA in common with us than they do with protists or fungi. Oh. Which, yeah, remember, so molecular evidence. Right, like when you guys made your cladograms. Mm -hmm. So, on top of that, Sam, guess what happens if you break a sponge into little pieces? Regrows. Yeah, it regrows. <laughs> so anytime you break a sponge or it gets damaged in any way, all those pieces of sponge that come off, because they don't even have tissues, they don't have to worry about putting together like this big complicated sheet-like structure of tissues. They've got all their cells just sort of co-mingled in there. If I went like, Mah! Not to this one because it's dead. This is a skeleton. But if this one was alive and went like, Mer! it could just, each of those now got two sponges. It's cool. It's you're, like going, you're going around in your boat, you found some nice shallow warm water, rich in sponges. Each sponge you hit <laughs> breaks off pieces. Sponges are like, cool, thanks for helping me reproduce. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Again, this is a trade off because they're so simplistic. Because they don't have tissues, they're not able to do anything like cool and complicated like we are. They don't get hurt the same way we do, they just reproduce. This one's my favorite though. They can also produce this structure called a gemule, or how the Brits say it, a gemule. This is more common in freshwater sponges. Here's how it works you got a sponge like you know mommy or daddy sponge and they're hanging out and all of a sudden there's not a lot of plankton to eat they're getting awful hungry they're starting to die the water's getting cold stuff's getting crappy they're like ah oh, no so this is what they do they take like a couple of coanocytes some amoebocytes maybe even a porocyte they pack them in there right they put a real thick coating around it spray them everywhere this would be like the sponge version of like seeds or spores, like, oh, yeah, like spores, right? So they just package up everything you need to grow a new sponge and shoot them out. And they've got this nice thick coating on them. So the sponge is dying with its dying sponge breath, shoots out all the gemmules everywhere. Oh, yeah, the gemmules cool. land, they're hanging out. When conditions improve in the water again, potentially each of those gemmules could grow into a baby sponge. It's got everything it needs on the inside. Pretty heroic. So it's like it's pretty sweet. It's like packing for a yeah for like a survival. Mission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Takes a little survivor shell to whisk it. So sponges, uh, yeah, they're pretty crazy. However, it's we're not done like, yet. It's kind of like Mega Mine when you sent the oh yeah yeah, yeah when you sent the little kid. Because <clears throat> sponges can also reproduce sexually. Whoa. What? Sponges yeah. On. Yeah. <laughs> However, when they reproduce sexually, you should know that all sponges are hermaphroditic. Anyone remember what that means? We talked about it earlier this year, Michaela. They have both genders. Yeah, they, they produce both the sperm and the ovum. And unlike when this happens in most chordates, they make fully functional sperm and ovum. Now already, I just saw some of you like, so they could like make their own sperm and just have sex themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Someone remind me though, what's the purpose of sexual reproduction? What's the point? It has to be between two individuals. Yeah, but why? Genetic diversity. We're trying to increase genetic diversity. If you can reproduce asexually, there's no point in making gametes and then fusing your own gametes. 
We're, like Connor said, we're trying to find another individual. So the sperm from one sponge needs to get to the ova of another sponge. Here's the thing though, sponges are sessile. So how is anything from this sponge going to get over here to this sponge? Remember the whole ostea oscula thing? This is called broadcasting. Broadcasting is what it's plants do it, fungus does it, in fact plants do it, they're doing it right now, we call it pollen instead of plant sperm, but that's what it is. Wait. So when they do it, the sperm will get released in the cloud. See this picture? That's not steam, that's not dye, sperm. Wait. Yeah, a lot of it. I'm still stuck on the pollen being plant sperm. Yeah. Pollen is, so when you yeah. breathe in pollen, You're breathing. And you plant sneeze, sperm. you're sneezing out plant sperm. It's all up in your nose. They can tell me that, Mr. Patterson. Really happy that you're yeah, I'm already I agitated in my nose. I didn't even know that. Plant plant sperm. Well, you, you, you are. Okay, I'm going to avoid it. Well, <laughs> I'm staying inside. Now, yeah. just like the plants, when they broadcast that pollen, it's designed to get carried by the wind for great distances, yeah? Yeah. Sponges, no different. When they shoot this out, I mean, remember, there's a pretty good current going between those ostea and oscula. So they shoot out the sperm, and it can get in the water. It can float for pretty great distances, and it can get to all the sponges in the area. There are even some sponges, we have a few documented cases of, uh, of hybridization successfully happening so between like, different species of sponges. They kind of don't have a choice. They're just like, yeah. hey, take my sperm. Exactly. It's, it's just going everywhere. Everybody's sperm's going everywhere. Now, unlike plants, which are capable of hybridization and polyploidy, right? If they don't have the same number of chromosomes, if their traits don't line up, those gametes aren't going to fuse. It's not going to work. But, I mean, if you got a bunch of sponges in your like general like area, everyone's now reproducing. <laughs> when this happens, those archaeocytes that you saw on the screen earlier, those help with fertilization. What's archaea mean? Uh, oh. I don't think I was here. Like, think archaic. Old? Old, very good. Older, ancient, but arc also means egg. Arc also means Old egg. egg. Really? Yeah. So, these are, these are primarily in charge of making the ova and collecting sperm to fertilize. And then on top of that is if sponges weren't weird enough, when they do this, their larvae have cilia on them, which means they can sort of swim around a little bit, like all scuttly like. That's cool. <laughs> Remember though, they're planktonic, so can they fight against the current? No. 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 Could they even fight against the ostea current? No. no. Wait. So, so some sponges may or may not be eating other sponges. So it's definitely advantageous for you as a sponge to get your sperm as far away as you can. And we want to get those offspring out through the oscula shot, you know, as far away as we can because if they get too close to another sponge, they just turn into food, not baby sponge. Dang. And they don't have brains and stuff, so I mean, it, they're probably eating their own young. Dude, that's kind of yeah, like... It's, <clears throat> most it's likely. Tough. It's uh, tough. Yeah. How often does it, like, let out sperm or whatever? Is it doing that 24-7? No, you, you'd see it. What? Wait, how often? I have no idea. No, often. Like, you, you look it up and you put it in the comments so everyone can I see it. Sponge. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Look, look it up. Let's see. Not if I look I mean, first. Prob probably, like, the, they're going to probably wait for, like, the water to be warmest, like, best conditions, right? Because babies are fragile and wimpy. But anyway, uh, here, folks. that's all the stuff you need to know about sponges for your quiz on Friday. Um, no magus. So no magus. There's a quiz on sponges on Friday. Yep. So what questions do you guys have about sponges? Sponges.